In this video, your learning target will be to apply the properties of rational exponents. Now, the good news on this lesson is that the properties of exponents that we talked about in the previous chapter are the same properties that we're going to use in this chapter. The only difference is the exponents now are going to be fractions instead of always being um, some sort of integer. So, I'm going to do five examples with you and kind of work through um, you know, some of the problems so that you have a, a good feel for how to apply these properties of exponents. So um, here's our first example. Let's say I have r to the eighth that's being raised to the power of one half. Now hopefully you're thinking right now of a property that we've already used before. If I have uh, a to the m raised to the nth power, you might remember what we did with these exponents was to simply multiply the exponents would be a to the power m times n. That's the power of a power property. So all I have to do in this example is, is multiply a times a half. Now in this instance, um, that's not so hard to do. 8 times a half is just 4. Um, so I get just r to the power of 4, and that's simplified. Of course, this could potentially be a little bit more tricky, right? If, if both of these exponents were fractions, um, you know, I might end up with a, a power that's actually a fraction or an exponent that's a fraction as my final answer. But in this case, it turns out to be nice. It's just 4. Let's look at another example that might be a little bit trickier. Let's say I have 243v to the power of 15, and all of that's being raised to the 4 fifths power. Now, if you remember um, another property that we used last chapter, that was if I had like a product, and I was raising that product to a power, essentially what I, dis I did was distributed that power to each of the factors in the product. So I'd have a to the power m times b to the power m. So I'm going to apply that same very property, but uh, again, it's a little bit uglier because I have a fraction here, 4 fifths, but I'm nonetheless going to distribute it to the 243. So I'm going to have 243 raised to the 4 fifths power. And then I'm going to have to do v to the 15th and raise that to the 4 fifths power, right? I have to distribute it to the, to the factor of v to the 15th as well. Now what I have to do here is kind of review back from what I did in the last section. Um, if I have a number raised to a, a fractional exponent, I'm going to see if I can first apply the root, which in this case is a fifth root, and then raise that answer to the fourth. Now, I don't know why I wrote a... Uh, where's my eraser? I don't know why I wrote a 5 there. That should have been a 243 to the one-fifth. So now you may or may not recognize 243, but that is actually 3 to the 5th power, if you double check in your calculator. So therefore, the 5th root of 243 is just the number 3. So it's 3 to the 4th, which is going to be, I think, just 81. So this number, in fact, is just 81. Now let's focus our attention on the variable part. What I have to do here is exactly the same thing I did in the previous example. I have a power raised to the power. Essentially, I have to multiply these together. So realize, guys, if you're multiplying 15 times the fraction 4 fifths, you don't need a calculator to multiply uh, fractions. Uh, what I suggest you do is if you don't have a fraction, you can make it into a fraction by putting 1 underneath. So 15 is the same as 15 over 1. And what I could do is I can look to cancel common factors, like 5 I know goes into 15 three times, and I'm left with multiplying the 3 and the 4 to get 12, and the denominators were just 1. So the new exponent is just 12. So I have 81b to the 12th. Again, I guess on a quiz or a test, if, if you must use your calculator and multiply that, I guess you could. But um, that, that is something you should be able to do without a calculator. Um, let's look at another example. Number three, I'm going to do 3x to the negative second times a y to the three-fourths. And that's going to be multiplied by 4y x to the negative three-halves. 
So this is trying to make you uh, get confused a little bit here, but essentially I'm multiplying everything in this problem together. So what I always like to do first is I like to look at the coefficients and multiply those together first. So if I multiply the 3 and the 4, I get a 12. And I'm just going to kind of cross those out to make sure I don't get confused by those any longer. Now I'm going to multiply x to the negative second by x to the negative 3 halves. And before I do that, I'm just going to write them next to each other side by side because we like to multiply like bases. So really I have x to the negative second time x to, times x to the negative 3 halves and I also have a y to the 3 fourths and I'm going to multiply that to this y. So I'm just writing those next to each other. Now I'm going to focus my attention on multiplying those two x's together. Now if you recall from last chapter, if you're multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. So what I really have to do is I have to add together the negative 2 plus the exponent negative 3 over 2. Now what makes this tricky is obviously we have fractions, right? Um, you could get a common denominator of 2, which would mean I'd have to multiply this first one by 2 over 2. So I really have negative 4 halves, that's the number negative 2, plus negative 3 halves. And negative 4 plus negative 3 is negative 7 halves. So I have 12 in front and the new exponent for x is negative 7 halves. Now in all honesty guys, I am fine if you need to use your calculator to just add together negative 2 plus negative 3 halves using your alpha y equals button so you can right away get to that exponent, I'm fine with it. You don't need to do it by hand. Whatever's faster for you I guess is fine. Now if I have to add together the exponents here, since I'm multiplying the y's together, I have to do 3 fourths plus 1. Now I know that's 1 and 3 fourths, but if I got a common denominator for the 1, that would make it 4 over 4. So 3 plus 4 is 7, and I keep the denominator a 4. Now again, if you don't know how to add 1 and the number 3 fourths together, I'm fine if you use alpha y equals in your graphing calculator to get you that 7 fourths. That's fine with me. So I have y to the 7 fourths here. Now everything looks good except for this guy right here. And you might remember we don't like to leave any exponents negative. And the same property applies. If you have a negative exponent, if it's in the numerator, you drop it down to the denominator. And if it's in the denominator, you'd bring it up to the numerator to make it positive. So my final answer, I'd have a 12. I'm going to keep the y to the 7 fourths in the top. That's a positive exponent. But I'm going to drop the x down and make it x to the positive 7 halves. And that would be my final answer. I would accept that. Let's do um, maybe another one or two. So you have, again, a chance to kind of look back at a few that might help you. So if I have y to the 4th times x to the power negative 5 fourths and then times a y to the negative 1 half and I raise that whole thing to the 2 thirds power. Okay, so again, these are similar problems to what you've seen uh, back in, in chapter 2, but fractions for exponents. Now, before I, I distribute this exponent of 2 thirds, I'm going to see if I can simplify inside of the parentheses. And I notice I have two factors that have a base of y. That means I'm allowed to add the exponents for those guys. right? Whenever you multiply like bases, we can add exponents. So I'm going to do 4 plus negative 1 half. I know 4 take away a half is 3 and a half, right? So 3 and a half is the same as 7 cut in half. And again, you need to use your calculator to do 4 plus negative a half to get, neg to get 7 halves. Totally fine with it. So I have y to the 7 halves times x to the negative 5 fourths. And that's all being raised to the 2 thirds power still, right? Now what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to do the, uh, the power of a product. So I'm going to distribute the exponent of 2 thirds to the 7 halves and to the negative 5 fourths. Now that's not so hard to do. When you distribute, you multiply exponents, and multiplying fractions isn't that bad 
we just multiply top to top and bottom to bottom. So if I multiply 7 halves by 2 thirds, really I get 14 over 6, which I can reduce, or I can just see right away, I can cancel out those factors of 2, and I'm left with 7 over 3. So I get y to the 7 over 3 power, and if I multiply negative 5 fourths times the 2 thirds, I can see I can cancel 2 into 4 twice, so that factor of 2 stays in the denominator. And what's left in the top is a negative 5. What's left in the bottom is 2 times 3, or 6. So I have x to the negative 5 6. Again, if you have a hard time multiplying fractions, you can just put in your calculator negative 5 fourths times 2 thirds using the alpha y equals, and you'll get x to the negative 5 6. Again, the only problem is, guys, the negative exponent. So we want to drop that guy downstairs to make it positive. So I have y to the 7 thirds over an x to the positive 5 sixths. And that would be my final answer there. I'm going to conclude with one more problem and see if this will help you guys. Let's do one with a fraction. I have a to the negative first and b to the negative 3 halves all of that's going to be over a to the 5 fourths and that's times b to the negative second. Let's raise all of that to the second and I'm still going to multiply an a times a b to the 3 halves. Okay, so I tried to make it look scary and maybe it is a little scary when you first see it but let's see if we can kind of go step by step through this. Now, as I look at the numerator, I can't multiply the a and the b together. They don't have the same basis. So I'm just going to kind of keep those on the back burner for a second. Whenever I look at a problem, though, and I see parentheses, I always like to simplify in the parentheses. Now, if I could, I would multiply a to the 5 fourths times b to the negative second, but they don't have the same base. So I can't do that either. So I can't simplify inside of parentheses. So what I could do at this point, though, is distribute this power of 2 to both of these exponents in here. So that means I have to multiply 5 fourths times 2. And again, if you want to use your calculator, you may, but I know I can reduce this uh, fraction. 2 goes into 4 twice, so I'm really left with 5 over 2. So right now, in the denominator, let me see if I can rewrite the whole thing. In the numerator, I'm going to keep it a negative 1, b to the negative, two th uh, negative 3 halves, and I just changed this a to be a to the negative, or excuse me, to the just the 5 halves. It wasn't negative. So a to the 5 halves. And now if I multiply uh, the 2 times the b to the negative 2, that's going to be b to the negative 4. That was, that was easy. And I'm going to copy this part down. I have times an a, b to the 3 halves. Okay, now... Since I'm just multiplying all of these things together, um, I'm going to focus on multiplying a to the 5 halves times a. Now, really, a is a to the first. And remember, when you're multiplying the like bases, you have to add exponents. So I'm going to add 5 halves plus 1. And I know I can rewrite 1 as 2 over 2. So if I add the numerators, that's 7 halves. Again, you can use your calculator to add 5 over 2 plus 1 if you'd like. So really, in the denominator, I have a to the 7 halves. And if you look at the b's, b to the negative 4 and b to the 3 halves, I can add those exponents as well, since they're like bases that are being multiplied. If I do negative 4 plus 3 over 2, um, I have to get a common denominator of 2. That means I can multiply both top and bottom of this by a 2. That would make this negative 8 over 2. Negative 8 plus 3 would be negative 5 halves. So I'd have a b to the power of negative 5 halves in the bottom. Let's rewrite and clarify. I have in the top still a negative 1, b negative 3 halves. In the bottom, I've reduced this now to a to the 7 halves and b to the negative 5 halves. Now, you might remember... When you divide the same bases, you have to subtract the exponents. So what I'm going to do for these a's is I'm going to do a to the negative 1 minus 7 halves. 
And again, I'd have to get like denominators for that. And for the b's, I'm going to do the same. I'd have to do the top exponent, negative 3 halves, and subtract off this negative exponent, negative 5 halves. Negative 5 halves. Now keep in mind here, guys, I've got a double negative. I'm subtracting a negative exponent, so that's going to be a big plus sign. Now let's see if I can finish this off. Negative 1 minus 7 halves. If I got a common denominator of 2, that would be really negative 2 over 2 minus 7 over 2. I'd have a to the negative 9 halves. And over here, if I do negative 3 halves plus 5 halves, that turns out to be just b to the power of 2 over 2, or just b. Now again, use your calculator if you might. I mean, that's fine. I'm no points off for, for using your calculator. And then just realize this can't be a final answer because of the negative exponent here. So one final step, I'm going to keep b on the top, and I'm going to move a to the 9 halves in the denominator and call it a day. Thanks for watching this one, guys. And um, try the uh, video check and be ready to discuss that with your group or with me tomorrow. Thanks for watching.